What's up, guys? How's it going? Good, good. You guys ready to have some fun, talk about NFTs, talk about gaming, and what's the future of all this, right? That's why we're here. I love it. And uh, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. I know it's a little bit of a bear market out there, but the way we look at the future of what's happening in the industry, we could care less. I mean, we're just building and building, and the way we look at it is gaming is going to be the one industry that essentially is going to make the most sense for people to come into crypto. And what we're going to be talking about is essentially how we're going to get those people into it as far as mass adoption. Now, crypto is in a bear market. Just clarify, right? Because gaming is not in a bear market. This is true. I mean, if you look at the past six months or seven months, right, Hustle? What is it, one point something billion coming into this market? $7 billion invested Seven billion. into so Web3 gaming over the first I don't think we're in a bear market. No. Crypto is. And, and that, this is the biggest thing, right? We have to separate the crypto market from gaming. Because gamers don't give a shit about like, what's going on in the crypto market. I don't care. Like, yeah. I just want to have fun and play games. If anything, you're so depressed from looking at your crypto wallet that you go play a game to forget about it, right? Like, let's be honest here. But now, you know, gamify, or, you know bringing NFTs into gaming, you know, that's something that gamers have always wanted. Anybody in this room who's ever played a game before, when you're done playing that game and go to the next one, you're kind of just like, oh, well, what do I do with all that time I spent playing this? Or, you know, if, if another version of that game comes out, like I was talking to a few people today, y'all know Call of Duty. The new Call of Duty just came out, and it literally came out the day I went to Brazil to see my wife's family about a week ago, and all my friends are ragging on me when I come back, and they're like, your guns suck, you suck, like... You need to go play on your own for a little while, level up your stuff a little bit, and then you can play with, play with us again in, like, Warzone. And I'm like, well, if I could just bring those guns over and get half of the perks, I'd be, that'd be great, you know? And so even a lot of my friends, as much as I am into crypto and NFTs and gaming, even some of my best friends are still, like, hesitant because they're stubborn. We're all from Boston. We're a bunch of douchebags. <laughs> but, you know, so <laughs> even explaining to them, Sometimes it takes a little while for them to catch on, but that's fine. When you're in an emerging technology, it's okay to have pushback because I've seen pushback with a lot of the most successful technologies out there. Like, for example, I mentioned you know, to you guys that my main gig was Scott Herman Fitness on YouTube. I started making YouTube fitness videos in 2009 when everyone said I was stupid for filming myself in the gym. No one's ever going to watch your videos when I can go read a men's health magazine. No one ever buys those magazines anymore. They go right to YouTube or Twitter or TikTok to get their tips, right? Same thing is happening here. The people who understand the simplicity of, te of the technology, of what the NFTs actually are, they get it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that one of the things that we all need to think about is what is an NFT and how can we not say the word NFT to anybody moving into Amen. any kind of Web3, right? So let's face it, we all aped into some absolutely garbage, bullshit, awesome roadmap, play to earn NFT collections, right? My OpenSea account is garbage, right? Now I have a couple of them that are garbage. Okay. Garbage <laughs> from Boston. I have a couple of them, but when it's all said and done, it's all about how can we just simplify what gaming is. And, and to us, we're just worried about trying to explain to a regular person who plays a regular game that the process is exactly the same. You don't need that three-letter bad word NFT to play this game. You don't need crypto. There's not play to earn Ponzi tokenomics you know, having to do with all of the stuff that's out there. It's just digital ownership that you own. And what can you do with that? Well, guess what? Instead of spending a game or spending 60 bucks at GameStop, right? And taking it, or uh, $60 in a game and taking it to GameStop and they give you five bucks. This is, you can spend five bucks in a game and take it back to like a GameStop NFT marketplace and they give you 60 bucks because it's a supply and demand and it basically make, makes it that people can own their stuff and they can do whatever they want to. And I think that that is quintessentially the one thing that most of the game companies should focus on is digital ownership and the same exact game. And the bottom line is the game has to be fun, right? It's language. You just mentioned it's it's just yeah. a type of language and education. And and then let's, let's take a look at back at crypto, right? Uh, eight, seven, five years ago, you know, banks were like, oh, no, crypto, no. That, now every single bank has a trading desk. Everybody's into crypto. It's the same thing right now in gaming, right? We're talking about uh, NFTs, crypto. And now all of a sudden, $7 billion is coming. I'm telling you, Sega, 
Uh, we're seeing Atari. We're seeing all these big names coming into the space. They're going to redefine it because they know how to target the, the right audience. We're early. We understand it. We know what we need to do. It's just the evolution of it. It's the evolution of crypto. It's the evolution of gaming and gameplay. And it's so funny, too, because some people will act like no one's going to spend money on an NFT in a game. And it's like people spend money on microtransactions all the time. In fact, when we did our Paul Barron interview yesterday, there was a part in the interview where I said, I spent $40 on my Dragon Ball Z game waiting for Ian at the elevator. And I was talking to my wife later. I'm like, did you like the interview? She's like, yeah, you spent $40 on, on your Dragon Ball Z game? I was like, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I didn't like, say that. That wasn't me. <laughs> but like, it's literally you know, double-clicking the button on your phone, and all of a sudden now you've done a microtransaction. So this, this, these things happen all the time. And with people being home more often, they need a source of entertainment, and gaming is that source. And a lot of us believe that the, all these mobile games are going to be the ones that do bring on mass adoption. So with that being said, I think it's, you know, we can get into some of the questions that we prepared to kind of talk to you guys. I, and one of the first things I think I want to talk about is, you know, what's the number one thing that you think will bring mass adoption to Web3 and NFT gaming? And we'll have a discussion. Yeah, to us at, at, at Wag Me Games, and we're building a mobile app, uh, our entire strategy is not to require crypto at all. You do not need crypto in order to have a digital ownership of an asset in the game. So essentially what we're building is the ability to just double click a phone, just like you would do in any other game whatsoever in the entire world. And basically you're airdropped these in-game assets, they're called NFTs, into a custodial wallet that the person didn't even know what they had. And the whole goal is play the game, have some fun, right? It's all about the game first. And when you're ready, when you're ready to say, okay, I'm curious what this is worth on the secondary market, on GameStop NFT market. Well, your level five you know, human emperors trading at $50 a piece. Wow, I, I, I spent $8 on that. That's interesting. How do I do that, right? And then it's the educational process after the fact, after they're into it, that, I, that we feel, and you know, we're, we're all in as far as just making it so that you don't have to have any crypto or a wallet, which let's face it, the first time that you guys set up a MetaMask wallet, how nervous are you with that seed phrase? First time or even now? Even now, right? Even now you're like, oh my gosh, did I just click on a link that basically is gonna drain my entire wallet, right? It's scary as shit, right? So if we can just minimize all of that, get rid of all the scary stuff, just make it so that it's just simple to buy something that they normally would buy, and when they're ready to trade it to see what it's worth, that's when crypto and NFTs and wallets and uh, education come into play. And you know that's kind of how we feel that most of the games, and we're hoping that a lot of the games actually follow our footsteps, are going to achieve the mass adoption because it's hard to get people into crypto, especially in a bear market. No, I mean, uh, you hit it on the money. The game's got to be fun. Game's gotta let, be fun. let the people have fun, yep. and then everything else will come in. And also just build an interface that is relatable. You know, if you want to trade your assets, give them the option, go on the website, and you can link a wallet, or you can open up a, a wallet, whatever. If, it, if it's Epic Games, eventually open up an Epic Games wallet, and you can trade your assets. But it's all going to be off-chain. Your assets that you earn are linked to an account. And if you want to trade those assets, it should just be the liberty of, I want to trade a Fortnite skin, I go connect to Fortnite, and I trade it. Oh, 100%. And, you know, everyone is so focused on doing everything they can in Web3. And there are going to be games that come out that are this massive, immersive environment and full NFT. Like, the whole Web3 experience will be there. But, you know, our approach at Wagme is we want to do continue to make more games. Why not just make the first game one where you're giving them something they're already familiar with, a downloadable mobile game, and then you kind of sprinkle in the NFTs and the tokens into there to get them used to it. Now, if the game is successful and it's fun and you build a massive user base, those people already trust the process. So you're going to have a lot easier time if the second game, you know, maybe has land sales or some of those things you see in more of the traditional Web3 games. You already have 100,000, million, 2 million people playing your game. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll give that a shot because I've already been playing the first game. I like it. Crypto isn't as the scam I thought it was now that I'm educated. So I'll go and try maybe doing a land sale and figuring out what staking means and all these other things, right? Yeah, I think it's leading with gameplay and, and not leading with tokenomics and not leading with NFTs. And it's switching the verbiage, but it's also switching the experience. So it's making it where it's not trying to get people from crypto into gaming, which there are plenty of people that are in crypto. What the fuck are they doing right now? Not buying the next, you know, scam coin or, or NFT project that, you know, is going to go to shit. So they're hanging around, they're playing video games. 
but you need to lead with the video game, right? Well, I think, Dr. Uh, JPEG, why don't you talk a little bit more about that? Because with Non-Fungible Arcade, it's all about bringing communities together, right? And so one of the things that your guys, you guys are trying to do is bring in also people who not, aren't necessarily into crypto. So maybe talk a little bit about Non-Fungible Arcade and what your plans are moving forward. Yeah, well, you know, like I said, I think that we're focused on community because we're focused on the two communities that are ignored the most in the video game industry, which is gamers and game developers. So you think about gamers, large companies like Epic Games, shout out to them, love them. But when you really think about the idea is, oh, let's build a game. All these people are going to come buy assets from us, like, you know, just microtransactions all day. You know, all you're doing is investing time and money in this. And yeah, you're having a lot of fun, but... At the end of the day, like, do you own anything? You're not investing in the company. You're not seeing like a, even like a quarterly return just to your account. They give you credits in the game, right? So it's it's the fact that it's just kind of like a, a one-way siphon, and we want to change that. We want gamers to be able to own their stuff, trade between each other, like actually be able to say like, yo, I'm an OG. I've been in NFA since season one. Check out my elite skin, right? So it's 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 about having that experience. It's about having that ownership because you enjoy the games you play. That's like, when I hear people marketing games, like, well, it's, it's, it's fun. I'm like, yeah, no shit. It's a fucking game. Like, you, know, you can't lead with that. And then start talking about the tokenomics and, you, and your pitch you're giving everyone. So yeah. uh, you really, you have to break that wall down where, where gamers are like, yo, I want to play those games. And they understand the concept. Again, changing the verbiage from NFTs and, and tokens to, hey, do you want to trade your asset? You know, you can sell it. And we're doing USDC transactions uh, in NFA and, and just making it where it's like, oh, I get that. And, and, and talk about the community, right? Like the, the community feedback and being able to kind of just have that conversation with what the community wants or needs or ideas, right? I mean, that's that's huge in, for everything that you're building. Yeah, I mean, our games are built by gamers for gamers. Um, when I started this, just literally wanted to recreate Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. <laughs> I was like, well, let's, Love just, that game. let's just see how this goes. And it's just snowballed from there. But, you know, it's really about that we took it and we introduced it to our audience. Like, OG oh, started closed Discord, still closed Discord, like 400 people, like, hey, check this out, try it out. And they give us feedback. And we literally have a feedback section, ideas, and then our team goes and meets and talks about it. Like, yo, they were talking about this, they have this experience. Because it's that nostalgic stuff, right? It pulls in your heartstrings when you talk about, you know, old school arcade games like that. And uh, it was cool because we were able to take people's idea, put it in the game, and they're like, holy shit, these guys, like, actually get it. Yeah, and you talk about community too, right? Community in gaming, I mean, if you think about clans and all of the camaraderie that happens in gaming, that's been happening for decades, right? And we talk about community in crypto, and yes, we're talking about the governance and being able to vote and all the cool things that go along with being able to have a community and an emerging technology with gaming, but it's been around forever, right? So it's being able to say, okay, you have been doing the same thing for decades, for years. It's the same process. And as long as you know, game developers and, and founders and builders like ourselves now can, just like you said, Jorge, have the messaging, have the messaging where it doesn't have to be an NFT, it doesn't have to be crypto. It's just straight up the same exact process that you've been used that you've been used to. And by the way, there's some cool stuff that we want to teach you that actually goes along with the game that actually makes it cooler because it's blockchain, because there are some cool governance things and some really neat things you can do with the token as far as utility is concerned that you can't do with Web2 games. And I think it's just like like I said, and, and Johnny, we talk about messaging all the time, right? It's the messaging is the most important part and not shoving anything down somebody's throat because we, we actually did a, um, uh, when we were doing our, our Genesis NFT collection, we started on Facebook and we're like, let's go ahead and, and you know target people who are Clash Royale and NFTs. And when I tell you the feedback in the comment section was brutal, it was like they went off because all we saw was right click, right click, snapshot, JPEG suck, Ponzi fucking scheme. This is when you lead with NFTs. I mean, constantly yeah. having to do with NFTs. Yeah. So listen, what we have to do is understand the mentality of those people when we're going to actually market for mass adoption. Because if we don't take the feedback, which is truly the, the, the word on the street, 
We're kidding ourselves in this bubble, and I think that that is also going to be one of the things that we have to focus on. It's, it's the messaging, it's the marketing, and the keep it, simple pro- keep it simple stupid process. And as long as we can just simplify things as builders and founders, yeah, there's a lot of moving parts with all the tech that's going on with all the things that we're doing because it's a lot more complicated, but it's all about just trying to make it as simple and as seamless as possible so that the user has no idea that is, is a blockchain game. It's just a cool game. It's all about the packaging. You know, and part a lot of what I do is I do a lot of outreach to like gamers and streamers and content creators because we're getting very close to releasing our game and I need to get the right message out there. And so when I talk to to gamers that are streaming on YouTube or Twitch, you know, they're afraid to bring up a crypto game because they know they're going to see the comment section just like we saw on Facebook. And so I say to them, I go, "Well, it's all in how you present it, right?" You know, because I do a lot of streaming on my gaming channel and the games that I stream, I'm getting duplicates of all the best characters because the videos that get the most amount of views are the ones that are exciting where, like, you know, you spend the in-game currency and you have a banner and you get new characters and you get a lot of duplicates. And I said, now imagine you're streaming and your your fans are watching you and they know at the end of that stream you're going to give away all the duplicate characters that you got, even if they're some of the best characters in the game because you don't need them. You have them already. You're a streamer. You do this for a living. You know, that's exciting. And the reason why you can do that is because it's an NFT. You don't have to say it's an NFT. You don't have to advertise that in your stream. But it's like, hey, at the end of this stream, I'm going to give away all the extra characters that I don't need to my my top followers. And they're going to get so excited about that. Or clans, for example. One of the hottest thing about clans, especially if you're in clans with your friends or family, is that when they suck, you ha- you can't kick them out. Right? So, like... When you have a clan, you have the, the runs of the litter that maybe don't play as much, the characters aren't leveled up as much, right? And you're like, damn it, you know, like, why did I invite him in here? Well, now, if, they, they're, if their cards suck, you just can trade them one of yours that you've leveled up and then go rebuy it and level it up again. So it's help, almost help like, boy up. yeah, so you can, you can re-strengthen your own clan, yeah. you know, and you can help out the players that aren't as good or don't have as much time to play. And then now everybody's happier. And these are the ways you need to explain it to the traditional gamer for them to understand what the opportunity is. Well, and the thing is, this has been around for years and years and years. You look at the CSGO markets. I think the other day, a CSGO skin, if I'm not mistaken, sold for six figures. Six figures yep. the other day. This is basically the Web 2 iteration of NFT gaming, and it's been in front of our noses for years. But the thing is, is you still actually don't own those assets. It's just a part of your account. You're just trading those assets. Luckily, CSGO has a system where you're able to actually trade your skins. But all this is doing is actually make it empowering to where it's not just linked to some email password account. This is linked to your immutable wallet, which you cannot be compromised if you are secure, and it is yours. You are digital. You are the verified digital owner of that asset, and it's an in-game collectible. It's not an NFT. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Well, so what do you guys, speaking of gaming and, and tokenomics and things like that, what do you guys think the future is of tokens in gaming? Because there's a lot of games that come out that have tokens. Are they integrating them correctly? Do you think that maybe they're trying to over-integrate tokens into the games just to make it crypto? What do you guys think it, about that? Is there, is there tokens in Web2 gaming now? In CSGO? Only at the arcade warfare. when you put it in the Yeah, the I mean, the, the, <laughs> if there's no tokens in those games, why is there tokens in our system? It's just because we come from the crypto market, right? And I, and I get like, uh, this, is, this is a funny co- co- thing, right? <clears throat> at arcade, you know, we're separate, separating the meta gamers and the gamers, right? Because there's that's just the way that this game five market has evolved. Um, but in reality, it's like, why do we need to have tokens in certain games? Like, games should just be fun and play the game. Like, uh, if you're gonna add the the word digital collectibles and all that other stuff, cool, do that. But you know, don't tell me I have to go buy your token from you know I have to go to Solana or ETH or whatever. JPEG, we say this all the time, right? When, when we talk to gamers, like, you don't go to your friend and be like, yo, dude, I just made it one ETH. And your friend's like, what the, f- what is, what, what's one ETH? But if you go to your friend and they're like, hey, I made a thousand bucks, you're going to understand, oh, shit, you made a thousand dollars. And I think it's just, again, the language and all these things that we have to have in these games. Uh, yeah. it just, it's not needed right now. Uh, maybe in the future, I don't know. But right now, let's just keep it simple. You, you say it all the time, right? Stupid, simple. Yeah, keep it simple, stupid. Yes, <laughs> but yes baby. Right, but here's the thing, right? With tokens, tokens should be the bonus. Like, tokens should be utility. It shouldn't be the requirement. Like, right. what we're doing, it, so, so in our game, we've come up with this cool system where, you know, we have a deflationary uh, mechanism where you can fuse, we have aliens and humans, and you can fuse an alien and human NFT to create what's called a Nephilim, which is a whole new species, right? The only way you can do that 
is by utilizing the token. So it becomes a utility that makes it so it's not, you don't have to do it. You don't have to have that Nephilim in your game to play. But if you want to, that kind of introduces the coolness of like, oh, now I understand. Because they already know, understand soft yeah. currency, like gems and jewels and Clash Royale, right? Well, Everybody yeah. understands currency. So as long as you can equate it to be like, all you have to do is buy this and you can do cool stuff like this, well, then the tokenomics and all the things that are go, go away as far as like what we know as far as this speculation of buying against a chart and things like that. Yeah, I mean, you said it, man. Games have in-game currency as an option. You don't have to go buy that to upgrade your characters and do things like that. But So the only things it. I can think of inside of traditional games, like RuneScape, there was gold. and Call of Duty Warzone, there's COD points, yeah, right? But COD you purchase points. the COD points to purchase skins and battle. Like you, you, you only utilize those to purchase assets inside the game. I actually think that tokens inside of games, for the most part, is unnecessary and i think that over time when you unlock something you level up in a video game you unlock a skin you unlock a helmet armor an asset that you can use in the game an attachment for your weapon in call of duty whatever it is that should be the same exact way those are the nfts it shouldn't be a value derived off of a currency which is based off nothing. yeah and when we have that where it's a limited experience where you can actually unlock things as you level up in the game's interface so it's, i mean that's a good point because then it's play to own you know what i mean like you, exactly you can't, you can't just buy the best skins, you know what I mean? Like you have to earn that as a gamer, or you gotta you gotta pay the man, <laughs> someone that worked their ass off playing this game. You know, now now they can cash in. Well, and gamers hate that. They hate uh, uh, what's it called? Pay for power, right? Whenever you have a game that's pay for power, like pay to win. Yeah, pay to win, pay for power. Like you don't want to play Absolutely. because it's unfair. Like you know, you're never gonna make it. But if I can grind and I can level up all my characters, and then you know maybe like. You want to play the same game, but you don't have as much time as I do to just sit there and grind for 10 hours. But you can go purchase that character. Yep. You're, you're still the same level playing field because it's still a skill-based game. Yep. right? And that needs to be the standard when it comes to you know gaming and introducing NFTs and introducing the secondary market. Yeah, and I, and I just want to add, like, to, to, to give you guys some prefaces, like, why are there tokens? Well, again, uh, the way the crypto market was, uh, VCs would invest in tokens in like layer ones, layer twos, and all that. So when GameFi evolved, they were like, okay, I want tokens in your game. And they're like, oh, okay. So this whole idea of like uh, buying and selling tokens and all that stuff is really kind of, again, from the kind of the history of, of the crypto market. Now, you, when you go talk to a game and they're like you know are you doing a token sale they're like a what no it's like an equity sale okay and and we're seeing now that change right and we're seeing vcs change the way that they're investing we're seeing uh kind of hold the whole playing field changing right now especially with the bear market that's happening with the crypto market yeah. uh you know vcs are definitely rearranging this was uh, look the crypto market has always been a quick you know make a couple dollars here bam you're 100 grand now you're a millionaire buy an ape you're bam you're a millionaire same thing happened in the GameFi market in the beginning. Now it's like, okay, we're, we're all of us are here switching the, the, the method, the, the theory, the, the language and everything. And we're working with the right people right now to kind of evolve the space to kind of just separate itself on its own. Yeah, I agree with you. And it's like Ian said earlier, it, it needs to be like an addition, like something exciting. I think that there's still a place for tokens in games, but it just it has to be done correctly and it can't be the first thing that's there. And it can't be required, right? There, yes. It's not a requirement. If you want mass adoption, everything has to be exactly the way it is in Web 2. It's just a technology. And, and we don't talk about enough. Like, we're all in our bubble with the technology of the NFTs and interoperability and what it could do and the metadata and all this stuff. Like, we're in a bubble. Like, when it's all said and done, nobody cares about the technology. Absolutely. I mean, it's like, okay, I have an ice maker. Like, this refrigerator, man, this makes the, the best ice here. I'm going to go buy this, right? Do you give a shit about what the condenser is on the inside of that refrigerator? I do. I, oh, I well, care. You, do. You, just, yeah. you just want your <laughs> ice, man. You're, you're, you're an engine head, so and congratulations <laughs> on your new uh, Camaro engine, by the way. Yes. Um, but anyways, it's like nobody cares about the technology behind it, and we have to think about that. We have to step out of the whole, this is an NFT and it's a non-fungible token. What the hell is a non-fungible token? Who gives a shit? Right? It's like, I own this cool thing in a game, and I've leveled up, and it's worth more. Awesome. Cool. Keep it simple, stupid. That's all we need to focus on. All the rest of it is noise, and if we can just get away from the three-letter bad word, like I said, NFT. I, I call it a three-letter bad word. It's known as a bad word to people that are in gaming, and if we can just yep. get away from it, yep. get away from it, in-game ownership, right? Assets. And that's it. And we were just talking back about our kids buying stuff and all this stuff, oh. right? It's understanding your audience, right? You think my, my five-year-old is, like, playing games right now. You think she, she's, like, going to come to me and be like, hey, Dad, like, 
I got to go buy an NFT or like, hey, dad. She's just like, get me the game. I want to play this game. Dad, Animal Crossing. Like, I'm, I just want the character. Like, yeah. we have to understand the audience. Like, yeah. it, it, gaming is such a large, like, it, it, gaming is one of those audiences that is from like age three, four, five mm-hmm. to forever. Forever, right? Like, yeah. So you, we, and now of course we're savvy enough to understand what we're doing in the sense of like where we are, but we need to understand how to market to the four-year-old and yeah. how to market to the sixty-year-old and the thirty-year-old, and, and how to that's market. where we're going to be able to. Like, and how to market to the dad of the four-year-old to say, "Hey, listen, you've been blowing all your loot on Roblox. I'm so fucking sick of you buying a hundred dollars a month on Roblox." Yeah. But now, we tell, we when you're sick of Roblox, place. I can take your account. And it's worth something, even if it's 10 cents off the dollar. Yeah. All right, let me get a couple bucks back. Monetizing right? the experience. 100%. You could punish your kids. I'm going to sell all your Roblox. You don't <laughs> clean your room. <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah. And Gone. Jor- Jorge's in trouble because you said your daughter knows my theme song of my crypto gaming show. And uh, he, she's going to be hassling you for <laughs> gaming assets here very soon. W- what is it if you don't hustle? <laughs> <laughs> I think it can be summed up uh, in just saying, like, prioritize players and prioritize developers and and the key to the developers part is you're we're starting as developers right you're seeing what the income is right and you're you're now you're seeing why like their sega and nintendo are powerhouses but the reality also behind that is web 3 and what we're doing in game five is giving back to the players right absolutely and and you're giving away half a million dollars in the first season absolutely. why how because of the revenue models that there is in these games and you're starting to see, a, like, what the f- like you don't need a, like, yeah. You, you, you have half, half a million? No, not, not to say it, but as a game developer or owner or, like, in our space, like, you know, we, it, it's you don't need a half a million. Let's give it back to the community and grow it. And, like, let's and get developers. feedback. Yeah. And, and the one thing and, we don't talk about are the esports uh, capabilities, right? So esports is one of the things that, and that, that's a whole other panel, but it's those little things where if you do, utilize the esports and you get people to play the game and they're having fun and there's tournaments and there's player versus player and there's prizes, well, that's when you can start introducing more of the NFT and the tokens into the prize pool. And then you're like, okay, now it starts to make sense why there's tokens and NFTs and things like that. So there's so many different variations that as this industry evolves, that we can utilize all the things at our fingertips. But when it's all said and done, if we want mass adoption, don't require crypto to own an NFT, right? I mean, that's it. Like, just make it as seamless as you possibly can. And, you know. If anybody's sweating. uh, Well said. Ecuador just scored. So it's 1-1. Thank God. Just, just <laughs> giving you guys a World Cup update real quick. Well, yeah, it's gaming, right? It's gaming, okay? Yeah, I know. The one thing I'll wrap it up with is look at the players getting involved. When people like Epic Games are putting $2 billion and they own the IP rights to Fortnite, just wait until they launch an in-game collectible skin within the next couple of years, which I guarantee you they do, and watch that catch fire, and then this mass adoption talk will ring bells. Yep, and then Sony, with what they just did, they just uh, issued a, a patent on some blockchain technology. So the big boys are coming. This is an opportunity right now for all of us who are so early and the founders and the builders to take advantage of it, find the projects that actually get it, and you, those are the ones that are going to actually be the OGs in the space. And just to give you guys a heads up, Call of Duty took, what, four or five years with three different studios? Three years per cycle, each game, one studio each. So it takes three years to build that type of a game. And people expect Call of Duty of the Web3 space tomorrow. It's yeah. And it's, what, year one and a half, I would say, of yeah. Game 5? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I, I, I still don't even think we're at year one because of the Ponzi-nomics and all that bullshit that ha- has happened. I think right now we're starting, like, maybe month two or three of, of GameFi after all the wash from Luna and fucking FTX and all that stuff. So I think right now we're starting all over. And I think in two, three years, well, I don't even know if we will be at one of these events. We'll be more at a gaming event talking about this. But right now, of course, it's, it's understanding the audience. Excellent. Well, guys, I think our time is up. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming in and, and listening thank to you. us talk. Hope you had a good time. Yeah, yeah and, I, Thanks, and, I, and I would just make sure you guys follow these guys, man. You got Dr. JPEG on Twitter. You got uh, Hustlepedia on uh, Twitter, Scott Herman on Twitter, Ian Bentley on Twitter, and I, mine's uh, T-R-E-K-I-33. Everybody Jeez. Take one of these days you're going to call me Ian. One. I swear one I'm Hispanic. Of these I'm Latino. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm, we I'm thought talking. you were friends. Uh-uh. Hey. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you, guys.